Hello, lovely podcast people. Welcome to another episode of Not Another Nutrition Podcast, brought to you by a pensive Martin McDonald. <laughs> Reminds me of that film. I don't know what it is. Is it 10 Things I Hate About You? Where the guy, Joey, or I don't know, this good looking dude, is like, What do you think of this? And she's like, Oh, you look very pensive. And he goes, oh, damn, I was going for thoughtful. <laughs> anyway, pensive. I've been thinking. I was thinking loads last night. I did a gym session. And uh, I was thinking. And it was partly I'd had a little chat with Sarah about some behavior change stuff that we teach within MNU. And how it was one of the areas. I can't remember how we got to talking about that. But one of the areas I most enjoyed preparing for delivering because it's not something that I've ever been asked to deliver on previously like at a fitness conference like it's not that much of a sexy topic and I guess on my tour talks I talk less about behavior change in terms of the you know that sense of how to help people because I'm talking to those people my tour is really for the lay person and some of the behavior change stuff that you can do is not something you teach someone to do to themselves because essentially you're telling them to get coaching, get social support, get themselves into an environment where others are doing the same. And there are certain norms they can stick to. Um, there's some stuff about kind of motivational interviewing. And, you know, this is why it's often working with a coach or a counselor or a psychologist in any on all different realms of your life can be super helpful because they can help you work through the process because we can be irrational we're often irrational beings because of our emotions and our hormones and everything and you know our own hurts and our upbringing and deep-rooted stuff that we don't see necessarily in ourselves so having someone who can help to um, process that stuff evoke our own motivations for change and those kind of things anyway I don't get to talk about it a lot and then so so teaching it on m and u i loved and and getting all of my thoughts down on paper um was really nice like all of the stuff i'd ever read you know tying up anyway i'm going off topic this this podcast is i'm going to talk about habits and i might call this podcast something like habits aren't everything because what what I want to do in this podcast, right, is very often as fitness professionals, people who want to help each other, help others, sometimes it's just a case of being in the right place at the right time. Being that vehicle for someone, the vehicle for change. That person is in a contemplating stage of their life of wanting to change, to get healthier, to get fitter, to lose fat, anything, whatever their change is. And often you, you can be the vehicle and you can be the inspirer, the motivator, the, that vehicle. And it's about being in the right place at the right time. But we, we're all different vehicles. And whatever you are at that time, you know, whether you, I sort of use this thing, I'm like, whether you're a clean vehicle, a fancy vehicle, a, a nice, safe, boring vehicle, it's right for different people. So this podcast, I sort of hope, is going to hit some people at the right time. I'm going to release it during the end, you know, the, the, the third quarter of the UK global pandemic, the UK's version of the global pandemic, our lockdown, whatever that in three months' time, hopefully, will be over. I, I sort of doubt it will be. Um, but at least we things are seemingly improving, but as Europe gets worse, it's bleh. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking about this because, you know, I, it's funny. I, putting this content out at any point during the pandemic, is like, oh, I've kind of missed the, missed the peak to, like, help people. And it's like, no. The pandemic's still going, to, you know, to, we're now into over a year after it sort of started in terms of our lockdown anyway. So um, I want to talk about various different things. You know, I've had questions coming in, which is which have prompted this podcast of like, how do I gear myself up ready for when gyms reopen? And my sort of, 
blunt but honest and and with love answer was if don't think of it as gearing yourself up for it what are you gearing yourself up for if you're not you know it was like oh, i'm lacking motivation cool it's this word i always talk about acceptance just accept where you're at accept that this lockdown has been horrific for motivation for life for happiness for everything you know for many people not for everyone but certainly for me it's killed a lot of my sources of pleasure and happiness um and you know seeing people being sociable having motivation to better yourself has been difficult at times if not all the time uh so anyway i'm wanting this podcast to be a point where i can as a vehicle for change a vehicle for motivation and to just right some wrongs in your head a little bit so in i think it was will be last week's podcast when these are all released I talked about doing stuff well and paralysis by analysis and with this podcast not wanting to go overly heavy on the preparation not overly heavy on the structure not overly heavy on providing references you know and linking you to them and this that and the other more so because lots of people don't care about the references um which, which is a bad thing sometimes because they believe all sorts and they don't ask for the evidence. I suppose that's the difference. If someone wants to ask me for the evidence of what I'm saying that contradicts another coach's, I'll provide them with the other other <clears throat> with the evidence. And the other coach will either provide them with mouse studies or they won't be able to give them studies or they'll get defensive and block them for uh, for daring to question them. There's a little a little help for you guys knowing who to trust. If someone's honest and uh and telling the truth and is evidence based they'll be will they'll be likely willing and able to provide you with where their evidence is coming from anyway this paralysis by analysis um is what i was talking about with me in the podcast and it's very similar with diet and exercise in that all too often and i said it in that show is people wanting to be on it i'm on it i'm all or nothing and they think that's a good thing it's not a good thing being able to turn a switch maybe for a bodybuilding show is maybe good but it's funny isn't it because they're not all or nothing bodybuilders i turn the switch and i'm in preparation mode what are you like the rest of the time when you're not oh you know i'm just really super relaxed i'll just you know i might have a beer once a week <laughs> um, i'm joking but it you know their version of not on it is next level they're still ridiculously regimented in what they do and uh bits are different uh, i'm on it i'm all or nothing what can i do to gear myself up to hit back i'm gonna go back in the gym six days a week tracking calories blah 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 rubbish don't try not to think like that try not to think of it as a completely different person different lifestyle the diet starts monday mentality and so there's a few things i want to talk to you about here and it's it's this thing of habits on everything this is my first little piece of advice little writing of wrong in your mind maybe where it's a bit of an obsession with unless i am in a routine and this unless this is a consistent habit unless i'm doing everything else right what's the point <clears throat> and it and i understand that mentality i really do but i want to call it out and help you maybe to call it out in your mind a little bit of just a case of doing a case of saying anything is better than nothing over time even if you just get one gym session in a week at any time or even in a month but at whatever <clears throat> i say gym session bit of exercise going for a walk you know for me it i i get this tendency i'm so inactive and i can think oh you know i'm going to start you know going for a run three times a week at lunch at work or something or i'm going to go for these walks or whatever rather than just any time i randomly get the motivation to do something you know it's a bit like oh i just suddenly feel like going for a run for whatever reason go do it great you don't suddenly have to become a runner have that in your lifestyle in your routine and not not doing it just because it isn't part of your program whatever 
might be undermining you. You know, oh, you know, and and actually just releasing that and actually leaving space for, do you know what, I, I feel like doing a home workout today. I'm going to do one, even though it's the one I've done this month. These little things add up over a year, over a lifetime, over whatever. And there is a bit of an obsession with habits sometimes. Unless it is a habit, unless it is a routine, what's the point? Unless I'm going to be striving for optimal, going, you know, have a program, have, you know, a periodized program. Um <clears throat> It can just undermine small progress and even actually maintenance. That's something I didn't have in my mind to talk about. Maintenance is a lot, lot easier with regards to fitness, um, muscle gain or muscle mass. I'm hesitant to say weight loss, but I will just remind everyone that often people say, you know, once you've lost the weight, do I have to eat that low calories for the rest of my life? And it's like, no, if you're losing weight, you're in a deficit. You go back to what maintenance is. Yes, you probably can't go back to eating the number of calories that you were before you ever started to diet and lost 5, 10, 15 plus kilos, whatever you lost, because you won't be at that same maintenance level. But you don't need to eat in a deficit for the rest of your life. So you can eat more. Um, maintenance is sometimes easier than weight loss. Uh, yeah, maintenance of weight loss. But again, fitness is easier main to maintain. A level of physique is easier ma to maintain than it is to improve. The amount of work required, the number of gym sessions required to maintain strength, or maintain muscle, is much less than to build it, for instance. So being all or nothing can, is a bit of an issue, and it's the the mindset has is fraught with issues. Um, so my encouragement, this is uh, probably going to be a fairly short and sweet podcast, but my encouragement is that th I hope whenever you listen to this in time in your life, it might be that you stumble upon my podcast in the future and we're no longer in a pandemic and you're no longer locked down, and you've, whatever, but you still might be feeling this way. And it's just to hopefully unlock some potential of don't freak out about having this perfect habit, this perfect routine of when to do exercise and what to do. Just do something. And again, if you do listen to this, if you're one of the few thousand people who listen to this as soon as it's released, do consider that. Yeah, gyms will be opening soon. We'll be able to do more, we'll be able to socialize more. Just do something, just do anything for now, but also accept where you're at. Don't judge yourself, don't feel guilty. Don't tax your, um, <clears throat> your inner energy. <laughs> My friend Shona Virtue, she, whenever we chat, she's like, I know you, I know you don't believe in energies. <laughs> and I'm like, Shona, I believe in energy. I believe in it, like, not just like energy, like ATP, but you know, like your energy. Like, I believe in us having a soul, just because it's not sort of evidence-based and don't have a randomized control trial in it. <laughs> but she always just says that to, uh, I don't know, wind me up probably. Um, but it's, it's that thing. Don't tax your soul, your energy, by judging yourself for not being, you know, oh, I have not done this. Oh, I don't feel like going back to the gym when gyms reopen. Like, And this is what I said in my blunt answer to that person on Instagram. Then don't. If it doesn't fill your cup, and I, and I said this as well, sometimes there will be a grind. Like you're in a great routine and you just drag yourself to the gym that one day. But if you're dragging yourself to do something time and time and time again, maybe that thing isn't for you. I need to get back on the bandwagon. Maybe that bandwagon isn't for you. Find something else. Uh, you know, this is why sort of more playful exercise can be great. Maybe, you know, CrossFit will be for you because there's community involved in this and the other. It's fantastic. Um, so 
So what I want to talk to you just finally about is with regards to your nutrition, being on it, <laughs> gearing up for when gyms open. Lots of people are, uh, have started to talk about tracking calories. You know, I've not been tracking calories. I couldn't be bothered during lockdown, this, that, and the other. Cool. Life isn't about tracking calories. And that's actually something, you know, when I was talking about behavior change, loads of the stuff that we talk about in there is like this non calorie tracking, beha changing behaviors and the magnitude of the effect that different behaviors will have on an end goal or on a principle. A principle being like a calorie deficit for fat loss. What's the magnitude of effect of X habit on a calorie deficit, for instance. But you're not tracking calories. Stop thinking about tracking calories. I talk about this thing, coaching to live, when I'm teaching practitioners, coach your clients to live at some point. And this idea that behavior change, it's little small habits, it always has to be small, small changes over time, not particularly evidence-based concept. You know, lots of the um, behavior modification, weight loss interventions, which have had counseling and behavior change and, you know, diet support have actually implemented massive changes in people's lifestyles and those what are what have worked best um and there's a bit of everything in there this is what why i talk about you know I, I i like my aggressive dieting that is only for a short period my longer period if i wanted to lose more weight and also coach myself to live if i didn't already have these good standing habits that i do have um it's part of a bigger picture that then allows me to maintain the weight loss. My encouragement to you is use this time to understand yourself as a non-calorie tracking individual. I know I'm calling out a very specific group of individuals, but it's a large group of you listening. Calorie counting is not a way to live for the rest of your life. Look at anyone you follow on social media. Do they track calories all the time? No. They only do it when they're trying to get to a specific goal. Some of them, yes, track all the time, 365 days a year, five years running of MyFitnessPal, great. More often than not, you'll see those people, and they're the people who haven't really got a good control on what they want. They aren't at their end goal. They're just constantly doing it. They always seem to be trying. And maybe there's stuff behind the scenes and they need to be more honest with their social media and with themselves. You haven't got a good hold on this. You're maybe secretly eating, binge eating, etc. And you need to go and address that and get some help for that. And maybe stop calorie counting for a while because it's grinding you into this bad place. But you'll see people who, like I go through periods of dieting. I don't particularly like calorie tracking, but I might want to get in great shape for this particular time to a level of you know in shape that's unsustainable for me but i like doing that it's a great endeavor some people train to do a marathon and they don't always want to be able to fit enough to run a marathon think of the endeavor like that rather than i need to maintain the best shape of my life for the rest of my life well do you maintain the ability to run a marathon a half marathon or whatever you train for that one time for the rest of your life no but you don't judge yourself for it there's a very big difference in the perceived guilt and perceived success and failure in your life and as a person and morally with those two different things fitness and body weight body shape body image um so use this time to not be on it but to understand how you can eat well start looking at this as a time to not be on it just to make some of these small changes so that maybe if you do want to push things forward later on you know your start point was better than it's ever been before. Get yourself a really nice grounding right now. There is nothing to do with counting calories or being overly specific. So I've kind of said habits aren't everything, but now I'm encouraging you to maybe invest in a few little habits, lifelong habits. Do some of what you would maybe do and you might do again during your process of body composition change or whatever you're going to try and do. Do it now. Do a prehab. Nutritional prehab. That's a cool thing that no one's ever said before. Nutritional prehab. 
someone's going to steal that. Uh, it's the pre, you know, if you don't, you know, prehabilitation, it, you know, it's like prehab of muscle group uh, injury stuff. It's like, I guess, a physio term, exercise term. Um, but nutritional prehab, it's almost like getting yourself into a good state. If you don't have good, a good basis in place, you don't, like, for instance, get a good relationship with food. Use this time. Like, I'm, at some point, I'm going to do the whole um, intuitive eating discussion and explain why so many people who talk about it have no clue what they're talking about. Um, but this, the, there's so many elements of this of, you know, starting to nourish yourself. Don't punish yourself with food. Use this time to work on that. You know, we're in, what are we in now? End of March, beginning of April-esque. Esque? <laughs> Esque time. It's about that time-ish, I think, is what I'm after. I just don't know the date. Don't know the days of the week. Don't know the time of the day these days. Um, but, you know, May. April, May, June. Three months for many of us in the UK. Europe, who knows what's going on there. Australia, yeah, we all hate you. Um, I love you, but we all hate you. We don't hate you. I'm flipping happy that you guys are having so much fun over there and you're not screwed like we are. Um, I want to be in you is what I really mean. Uh, love, hate. <laughs> anyway, so... I think that's the end of my message. Use this time, those three months. Start, you know, look, go look up the 10, 10 steps of intuitive eating and just forget the whole crap around it, right? But just the thing of like honoring your hunger a bit, okay? But on top of that, it's just eating healthy, getting healthful. Like protein, for instance, right? Everyone's like, how much protein should I eat? Oh, I need to track, I need to weigh this, I need to weigh that. Just to start understanding how many meals a day, what sizes of portions you can consume without using scales, the types of foods you want to include in a meal to get that. So that, and the reason being is that, if you're not aware, that protein is hugely beneficial for satiety and we can do such little things with protein and they actually have this magnitude of effect is quite large on our calorie intake our 24 hour total energy intake goes down when we increase our protein intake um and just start considering some of those things so that if you do go on a body composition journey once gyms open back up that and then you feel like you need a diet break or a week off or you go on holiday or whatever, that week comes back to looking like the last week of this lockdown or whatever, which looks good. It's got some good structure to it. It's not like you're either on or you're off. It's I'm being specific and I'm back to my, or I'm back to being ma maintaining with my usual good habits. I'm not going to go into this too much, but lots of the behavior change stuff that I mentioned in the beginning, lots of that is, <clears throat> there's these different things like self-determination theory is uh, lots of what we do and what we base when we work with clients on is around that. There's things about giving people autonomy, helping them to feel competent. Um, and there's some other stuff about like, there's something called perceived behavioral control which is very related to what most of you, you might have heard of something called self-efficacy, kind of like self-belief. But it's your belief in yourself to be able to control an outcome in your surroundings. And I just think some of what I'm talking about today relates to that. If you have this perception that you are more in control of your nutrition, it's not just like, I'm jumping on this one thing, this calorie counting, and that's going to solve everything for me. And as soon as you don't have that and you go to a restaurant where there's no calories and you start getting anxiety, like you're, you're messed up, you're in a bad place. This will undermine some of that. 
your perceived behavioral control. This is why I love education, because education often increases competence, which is part of self-determination theory. Your competence goes up, your ability, and which will increase your PBC, your perceived behavior, behavior control, your self-efficacy around controlling your nutrition. Like lots of people don't trust their own bodies. That's another thing with it, like intuitive eating is like, you can start to trust yourself to eat again. Oh, I don't trust myself around these foods. I don't trust myself to stop when I'm full. Like some of you have maybe eaten in a certain way, which has reduced your ability to recognize some of those things. But what I'm talking about here is education, fantastic. That's why we're bringing out our layperson's course. It will literally, the, the the tagline for it was, I don't know if it'll still be this, is become your own nutritionist. And that doesn't mean you're going to be completely able. Like, as I said before, a lot of this stuff is better with a coach or in a group situation. I'm trying to think of a theory or a paper or something about... Um, habits stick more when they are part of a societal norm. I think I talk about this in my non-adherence toolbox uh, talk that I sometimes deliver. But it's a bit like when you join a CrossFit gym and the societal norm, the norm in your social group is X. It's so much easier to stick to those habits, adherence to whatever set of norms is reinforced by those around you. Um, but yeah, what I'm talking about a lot here, like the education side of things, we want we want to educate people so that they understand, so that when things change or aren't exactly as they want or they expect, they have an understanding and they have an understand how to adapt and change and, and, a, and a belief in themselves that actually it's not the end of the world and they start to panic. Um, anyway. A meandering podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'd love some feedback on it. If you want to pop onto Instagram or wherever and just leave a comment just in terms of what you took from it, what was good. Because uh, I've just hopped on and just recorded this off the bat. Anyway, cool. Love you lots. Until next time. Much love.